How are you tonight? I'm good. How are you? Eh. My sister found one of my old batons. And Bridget is like, oh, you can't see her. She's off camera. Here, come to camera. Get into the shot. Get into the shot. This is our last week with Bridget. Yeah. We're going to have to say goodbye to Bridget because you're moving. Yes. Not because fine. she's dying. Everyone assumes, Nothing oh, God, the cat's fine. dying. No, she, you're just Bridget's fine. Right. You're, she's she's going to be fine. You're just she's moving. Little kitty. She's going to continue to be fine. This room is going to be hers. And I'm going to move in with a new kid. Who is a little older and less playful, but no loud because, yes, she'll be like, Arr. because she's deaf. So this guy put meat down his pants. <laughs> she can't hear herself. She's like those people who, what? I can't hear you. Like people That's who exactly immediately. exactly how she is because she can't. People who start screaming because they've been to a concert too long. So like, what? And that's... Like I come home and Bridget comes and finds me. Miracle, you have to go and find her because she has no idea that you've come home. And then you wake her up and she's like, whoa, what the fuck did you get here? How long have you been there? It's, you know. Every day is a surprise. Yes, I know you want to play, but I'm on the internet right now. She's still rolling around doing the cute thing. Like, play with me. So I, I, I wanted I wanted to mention, um, for some people who are watching us recorded and they didn't see the start of the show, I'm a little fuzzier than normal this week. Do not adjust your sets. That's actually You're on my face. Beardy. Yeah, um, this is actually this is on purpose. I didn't forget to shave. I'm actually doing a bit for my never ending story review that's going and I've got to do this for another week too. I've got to let this get all Ooh, you're 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 going full hobo. <laughs> now watch this. Watch when I twirl the baton. She's like hypnotized. Look at her. <laughs> She's like, what is this sorcery? <laughs> Shut the fuck. She, like, can't even handle it. She's a little wary because it bonked her in the face once. <laughs> and she stuck her face in it. So now, like, she doesn't want to touch it. What's this spitting metal thing? I'm going to touch it with but my she face. Likes to look at it. She's not looking. She's plotting. She's waiting for revenge. No, she's like... Like, she's totally entranced. But yeah, this I'm actually growing this out for a bit. That this is how committed I am to Sparkle Motion. I'm growing this out just to make you people laugh. In for like a third at less than a 10 second shot in a video. Less than 10 seconds. Yep. It's just gonna be like one little scene. Wow. Couldn't you get some spray on here for that? <laughs> Well, it wouldn't be the same. Also, that costs money. This just happens on its own. That's true. That is free. Yep. So, d no, I'm not doing this on purpose. Normally, I like, this is driving me crazy, I have to say. I'm doing this for you people! To entertain you! Is it itchy? Fuck's sake, it's itchy. <laughs> you gotta exfoliate, you know. I don't know how people don't, not because any sort of hygiene thing i don't know how people don't shave their necks guys i don't know how they because it just drives oh, me nuts cleared? yes you're gonna you realize you're now morally required to start wearing a fedora and calling people women milady and watching a lot of anime and hey they're gonna be so mad at me. Yeah, they are. You, why do you troll them? They're gonna be like, "Fuck you!" I happen to think fedoras are nice. You, not fedoras, trollies. The Doctor Doolittle head. Different. They come here. They want to see you. Okay, so we've okay, right now. I, I, we we've got a wonderful assortment tonight. Although the very the very first one. Oh yeah, this this makes me happy. The very first one. Let, let, let's get our intro on here. Okay. Each week, Catherine and the Radio Dead Air audience go out on the worldwide interwebs, 
find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment. We like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And this first story, this, this tells you, this, <laughs> no one was hurt. I have to stress that, which makes this beautiful, although confusing. Oh boy. Oh. <laughs> I love the response. Explosion throws man out of bathroom. Didn't this happen in one of the Lethal Weapon movies? Yes. Didn't this happen to Danny Glover? <laughs> he was on the toilet and, and they had to, well it wasn't out of the bathroom, it was into it. It was into the bathtub. This one knocked him out of the bathroom. I'm sorry, you stream is auto playing an ad and won't let me pause it. Ah, stop. I Stop usually it. use I usually use the bomb, but that's not working today. Providence, Rhode Island. A man who was thrown out of a Rhode Island bathroom by an explosion was able to walk away with only a bruised knee. Jeffrey Oppenheim. Which okay, the fact this guy is named Oppenheim. You were kind of asking for it. <laughs> And there are people at home going, who is Oppenheim? I don't know. Well, I think it was Oppenheimer, wasn't still, it? Still, still. Said he was visiting friend Andrew Pesson in Providence on Sunday when an explosion threw him out of the home's bathroom. It happened an instant like getting hit by a cannon, he told WLNE. Pesson was in the kitchen with his sons, age 9, 7, and 5, at the time of the blast. I uh, was in the kitchen with my kids and immediately smelled the burning smell. We just picked them up and ran out of the house. Besson said he went back inside the home of the boys' coats and shoes. Oppenheim said he suffered only a busted knee from the, a bruised knee from the incident. Uh, I'm very grateful uh, it was me in there, not one of the children who were little. They could have gotten killed. The cause of the explosion was unclear. No. No. I'm sorry. Yeah, you don't really get to say that. No! In a situation like this. If a bathroom fucking explodes and you don't know why, you that's, find that out. Yeah, that's a problem. You figure that, because that's, that's some, that is no! You know, the first that's thing. That's not okay. The, the first thing I it. thought of was those um, news stories, you know, how local news would go. Could an explosive be lurking in your bathroom? Find <laughs> out after this. That's the first thing I thought of. Yeah. Because the answer is yes. Yes, it could. Your I mean, bathroom. You just never know when the toilet terrorists are going to strike. Now, I'm. Is that like somewhere between Al Qaeda and the underpants gnomes? <laughs> I'm of two minds here. Number one, if something explodes and there are a combination of three young boys under the age of 10 in the house, they're my first culprits. Are you kidding me? My nephew watches Mythbusters and ev like at least once a day, I have to tell him, no, we cannot blow up the cat. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. He wants to... Today I had to tell him, no, we cannot put the cat in the panini press. He doesn't mean these things. He would never harm Bridget. He loves her very much. But in a nine-year-old kid's brain... Everything is a cartoon. Everything should be blown up. And he watches a lot of Mythbusters. So he really wants to blow shit up. And when he found out, like, Dan, my boyfriend Dan used to be in an army, in the army, and he knows how to blow things up, Pat was like, can you teach me? I'm like, No. And Dan's like, well, maybe. Yeah, Dan's like, sure. And I'm like, no, no, you can't. No. So that's my first set of culprits. A nine-year-old, a five-year-old, and a seven-year-old. They when did something. That's my, other, that's my other culprit. Because if you <laughs> explode out of a bathroom, good sir, what did you eat? Yeah. Your colon has much fury much fury what was that hormel thing you ate that time the one i shit my soul 
Yes. The 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 the, 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 the that was one of those the pre that was the sandwich meat pre-made in a microwave container stored at room temperature. Yeah, I nothing with meat should be stored at room. Yeah. Ever. Our next one is yet again failure to understand social media from a corporate level. Oh, good. How is this still happening? Social media has been around for long enough that people should get this shit by now. There is no longer an excuse. It's not new anymore. Should. Don't. Should is an awful word. It's an awful, awful word because it's a liar. Yeah. My mom's favorite expression used to be, don't should on me. This one. Do you, do you like donuts? I like donuts. Do you like donuts? Donuts? Yes. Yeah, who doesn't and, like donuts? And you could think, how could anything offensive be related to donuts? Oh. You haven't watched the right kind of porn. Well, Krispy Kreme has a bit of a problem. I do find that glaze offensive. I don't like Krispy Kreme. What's with that glaze on everything? It's gross. There's too much of it. Krispy Kreme apologizes for KKK Donut Club. Krispy Kreme apologized oh. after a store in the United Kingdom advertised promotion for customers called KKK Wednesday, which was to be held this week. KKK, which in this case was intended to stand for Krispy Kreme Club, is of course more famously, infamously associated with the Ku Klux Klan, a white supremacist mm -hmm. hate group. And, uh, uh, I mean, I guess the KKK isn't a thing everywhere. Oh, baby. Look at her. She's like, play me. So bold. The first thing you should do ever if you're going to market or advertise anything is google it thank you right there if you google kkk the first result should have known better now to be fair the uk just does not get the whole racism thing well no but, and at, that's, le that's at least not thing. american racism a lot of people don't get like I've seen criticism of the movie Kingsman that none of the main characters are people of color or whatever and there is a innocent but casual racism to that whole region of the world Ireland included Ireland England that whole yeah. area that like they don't really mean anything by it I once I was in they just they're they're not they're not they're just it's a different culture I was in England and I drove by a storefront and they were, I forget what it was for, but they had a great big Confederate flag up. It had nothing to do with the American South. Yeah, no, they just, and like, I mean. They don't get it. They're kind of like your 90-year-old grandma who still says colored people. And she doesn't have a problem with African Americans. She just, you know, that's what she, that's kind of how it is over there. Lionheart, the KKK took my bear claw away. You don't know that song. No. Is that a song? The KKK took my baby away. Oh. The Ramones. Yeah, no, I thought there was a song that was the KKK took my bear claw away. And okay. I'm like, no. I didn't they use that for the ad. No. No. Yeah, I know baby. that song. I didn't yeah, know okay. that. Yeah, okay. I was like, you were saying there was one about a beast. <sighs> Oh, you're about to give me a heart attack there. Um, <clears throat> I know the Ramones. I'm okay. from Long Island. Okay, then. It's a requirement. So, yeah. <laughs> Just Google it. Just use the Google. It is your friend. It's not that hard. And I mean, that's cute that they tried to do like a rewards club and all. But <laughs> it's KKK Wednesday at the Krispy Kreme. Mm -hmm. 
If you wear white, 10% off. And I don't like the KKK isn't international, are they? No, it's American. It's, it's an American. strictly American thing. So I can see where this would happen in a non-American franchise. But yeah, Google it. Google it. Because like 20 years ago, it wouldn't matter because Americans wouldn't find out and be able to get upset about it. But now we have the internet and everybody can get upset about everything. And that's why we yeah, invented. And that's why we invented Tumblr. Okay, so the, the, the general stereotype is pot mellows you out. That's the whole idea. It's, it's pot makes you chill, and you're not violent, you're not crazy. Yeah, the one, I, I, did, I did pot one time. That's, let's just admit illegal shit on the air. No it one did. gives a fuck. Yeah, that's true. I didn't find it particularly mellowing, because it made me hallucinate and it fucked up time and pot smells like tree farts it smells like skunk spray and there's a, there's a particular blade shade of blue nail polish that i own that smells just like pot. well in this case pot may mellow you out but not kidding it may make you a little cranky Woman that set Chicago apartment fire because boyfriend smoked all the pot. Uh, well, Chicago. Woman, you weren't able to get mellowed out. Woman pleaded guilty to setting a Chicago apartment on fire after she became angry because her boyfriend smoked all of their marijuana. Maybe she was mad because someone gave her Lucille Ball's hair. <laughs> Linda Lopez, 35, of Chicago, pled guilty Wednesday to residential arson and was sentenced to four years in prison. Lopez had been initially charged with aggravated arson, but the charge was reduced. The way say the 35-year-old had been living in a Riverdale apartment for just two weeks, only been in the place for two weeks. She set the place on fire. She reportedly told police she fell asleep, and when she woke up, her marijuana was gone. She accused her live-in boyfriend. The argument turned violent, with Lopez punching and threatening to stab him with a knife. She then punctured a plastic perfume bottle, poured the perfume on some towels in the hallway, and set the towels on fire. The fire department quickly put out the blaze, which damaged the apartment door, wall, and fire in the adjacent hallway. Is there a pot shortage I don't know about? I know, right? It's... it's... Like just make that asshole buy you more pot. It's not like they have to smuggle the shit in. I mean, as far as I can tell, this is the equivalent of he drank all the milk. Like, just make him go get you more. Hey, they call it weed for a reason, because the shit grows everywhere. Did you hear her? She was like, mm hmm Because the shit grows everywhere. That's why they call it weed. It's not like we have a shortage. I know, you like, there's, there's plenty. Just get more. Make him go get more. And she'd only been there two weeks and set the place on fire. When I first move into a place, I like having it all nice and new and cleaned up and, and nice for me. And not on fire. And not on fire, yes. Well, I like having my place not on fire no matter how long I've lived there. Yes. <laughs> Even if I've been in a place, like I've been here for about a year now, and I still really enjoy that it's not on fire. <laughs> Although it's your nephew feature in a home. Your nephew would disagree though. He would like to change that sometimes, yes. Yeah. yeah. It's been a while since we've had some straight up naked crazy. So this week we've got a twofer. I don't think you should use straight up and naked crazy together, <laughs> depending on the gender of the crazy. Our first one comes to us from California, San Diego. Naked man arrested while running on the freeway. A naked man was arrested while running and yelling at motorists and passing vehicles on Interstate 5 in San Diego. But his most serious crime was certainly biting a California Highway Patrol officer on the leg before being arrested. The man had been spotting running northbound near Cesar Chavez. Cesar. 
Cesar Chavez. 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 Cesar Chavez Parkway. At first, he complied with the command by an officer to get on the ground. He then got up and began running southbound in the northbound lane. Now, what this means was he was running the opposite direction of traffic. Well, naked. That's what you're supposed to do. Yes. However, he was doing this naked and flapping. That was his turn signal. <laughs> Just sort of shake it to the direction you're you're gonna. Yeah. <laughs> the officer. You, are you familiar with the internet trend of dog shaming? Yes. So someone posted a bunch of dog shaming pictures to Facebook today, and one of them was a cute little dachshund, and the sign said, "My dad can't walk around me naked." Because I think that his man bits are a squeak toy. <laughs> and I tried to bite <laughs> And it was the sweetest looking little dog. And you're just picturing this dog. <laughs> like, no, 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 that's not toys. <laughs> that just, I can think of many places that it would be awful to be naked, but running on the freeway because they brought him to the ground. The police had to yeah, take him. Both hurt. To the ground. Yeah, that's not somewhere you want asphalt. On the ass? No, that's that's not in a good. That's that's too much. That's a bad place to be naked. Yeah. We should have a list of bad places to be naked. I mean, it would be a long list. It would be, but I'm thinking practical places. I'm thinking sheerly in practical terms. Being on the interstate is a bad place to be naked. Because if you, that's, there's a lot of, it's hot and it's scratchy and you don't want road rash on your junk. No. No. That's not. I mean, I don't even have that kind of junk and I don't want road rash on my junk. Like, you just don't. There's a lot of nerve endings there. And the thing is, like, let's say you get hit by a car and dragged, God forbid. It might just rip the fuck off. We've covered something like that before, didn't we? Like, some chick ripped her boyfriend's scrotum off by hand? Like it was a fucking paper towel? I, I think I've mentioned that, that the, the amount of force <laughs> it takes. Right. It does not take very much force to remove a scrotum. I think it's like three pounds per square inch. That's something the Mythbusters should test. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Buster. Oh, He's going to have a bad week. Three pounds per square inch. It's not much. You just sort of pop it right off like an apple. Just pull and yoink. This is why it sucks having ex internal organs on hanging on your outside. Hmm. But not to be outdone, a woman in Florida had to top that shit. And lots of people sent me this one. They were gleeful to send me this one. I dare you to make less sense. It's so cute how they think the safe word actually works. The purple shot, it doesn't. It doesn't, work. It doesn't do it. It's like the goggles. It does not work. Naked Florida woman stops traffic, pleasure self. Jumps on Lexus, gets arrested. Naked woman presumably raised some eyebrows of Orlando motorists and passerby Sunday night when she took to the streets, not just naked, but also taking some time to masturbate and mount the hood of a car. Tawny Katane? <laughs> She's gone a little downhill. Most of our audience is too young to get that joke. Yeah. Oh, white snake. Uh, the naked Florida woman ran out into a residential street in the Fairview Shores area on the outskirts of Orlando, bringing traffic to a halt before she reportedly began touching herself while standing in front of one couple's car. So, here's the setting. You're driving <laughs> along the road. Suddenly, a naked woman steps in front of your car and begins to, and begins to double-click her mouse. They don't cover that in, in, the, in the driver's manual. What? It's like pop quiz. Pop quiz, hotshot. What do you do? What do you do? 
They don't cover that in driver's ed. Sora, get out and offer to help! The best right of way. Like, do you have to wait for her to finish before you can make your left turn? This is the point I would be grabbing my phone, plugging it into my radio stereo, and going through and finding I Touch Myself by the Dividals and cranking that shit to full volume. Because how do you... It's one of those moments. The couple in the car, reportedly Alexis, was apparently trapped and had no choice but to watch as the naked woman leapt onto the hood of the car and started a jumping, stomping frenzy, which also included hurling a cell phone at a car stopped behind Alexis. Where was she keeping the phone? Maybe she wasn't actually masturbating. Maybe she was trying to get her phone back. <laughs> That's not how you use the vibrate. That's not how you use the vibrate! I mean, suddenly this makes sense, doesn't it? It got stuck up there. She ran outside looking for help. She tried to extract it. She couldn't. So she thought opening her legs wide enough to climb up on the hood of the car would help. And then stomping around a little bit, it fell out. And then she was really, just so relieved that she threw it. I think it's pretty clear what happened here. The police report also alleged the naked Florida woman wasn't likely in a clear mental state because she had imbued some serious drugs. Carter appeared, to be, Carter appeared to be the influence of a heavy unknown substance. It's said we're at the point these days when someone could get fucked up on drugs and no one knows what the shit it was. Yeah. This is science. What has science wrought? And they're just like, yeah, she, she was on something. I mean, it it really is. It's like, what did the toxicology report say, doctor? It said, "Fuck you." <laughs> the little blood cells actually spelled out, "Fuck you." I want to. I want to see like some honesty in drug dealing, where they actually put on the label, "Warning: Use of this product could make you run out." into traffic and start jerking it. It's really specific. This, the, 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 the. It is really specific because that's exactly what happened. I mean, that's what, that's what legit drug companies have to do. If your Viagra is going to make you jerk it naked in the middle of the highway, they have to tell you. Even yeah. if that'll only happen to one dude in the focus group. Jed the Jedi, she told her drug dealer, I don't know. Surprise me. Okay, then. Oh, God. Never say that to a drug dealer. Never say that. Never say that to a drug dealer or a hooker. Do you think that's a wise decision? I mean... Finally this week... I don't know to blame these people or not. You've worked retail. I've worked retail. One of the hallmarks of retail is you have zero control over store policy. Pretty much they say frog, you say how high. But God, do they love to yell at you about it anyway. This is one of those things where these people did something incredibly mind-bogglingly stupid beyond all measure. And yet, this is the corporate, this is the retail mentality that corporations have perpetuated. The customer is always right. Prank callers tricks employees into destroying Circle K convenience store, causing 30 thousand dollars in damage what a prank caller fooled two circle k employees in globe arizona into destroying the convenience store so severely it was temporarily shut down loyal to a fault workers believed they were abiding the guidance of a security company and they caused about thirty thousand dollars in damage before figuring out the trick Call came about 8 p.m. Wednesday. The prankster posed as Circle K's corporate security 
claiming that a silent fire alarm was going off and giving instructions to contain the crisis. The caller told the employees to discharge fire extinguishers in the store, throw the extinguishers through the windows, and destroy merchandise, computers, registers, and security televisions. In less than five minutes, in less than five minutes, the employees wrecked most of the store and smashed all but one of the windows. You see, five you minutes! Fucking, and the thing is, you get a call like that, you fucking verify it. One employee remained on the phone while the others followed the destructive demands. So there's one guy on the phone going, okay, okay. He says to smash the windows. Yeah, Carl, smash the windows. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. Now the computers. I feel like these two were just really fucking disgruntled and needed a good excuse. <laughs> Someone called and said, it's like the security company. And I don't know. Let's so have to do it. Let's burn this mother down, Pookie. Pookie. Yeah, this, yeah, this is just fucking Clerks Three. Let's burn this mother down. And they realized what they had done and needed a good excuse. Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. And what is a silent fire alarm? That sounds like the most useless shit in the history of the world. If there's a fire, you want to know? No. I don't want you to quietly alert the fire department. I want you to alert my burning ass so I can leave. I've always thought that Samuel L. Jackson should be the voice of fire alarms. Move your asses! Get the fuck out! This place on fire! Go! You would leave. You would fucking leave. Samuel L. Jackson tell you to get out the store. You go. Silent fire alarm. Okay, Goofy Hair Ozzy. In other news, Circle K and Krispy Kreme joined forces for the Circle KKK Wednesday. In the immortal words of Ted Theodore Logan, strange things are afoot at the Circle K. You know how I believe... You know what it's like working retail. Yeah. You get told all sorts of horrible, stupid things you have to do. Mm -hmm. company policy mm -hmm. it's it's just it's the way things are so you do them you become mindless i imagine after working at the circle k long enough your brain's just like tapioca you're like i don't care anymore i don't care if i live or die <laughs> I, i'll what what do you want me to do eat a kitten okay company policy sure thing i don't care I haven't been in retail long enough to eat a kitten. I'm in, I'm dead inside. I just five. I love how they managed to do this shit in under five minutes. I mean, they're efficient. You gotta get that. That <laughs> the, is. That's that's efficient service. <laughs> that is a workforce right there. They could cause thirty thousand dollars worth of damage in under five minutes. They are motivated. Two employees. Wait, one guy did all that yeah, in under five minutes. Phone. One was on the phone, and the other guy was fucking the place up in under five minutes. Holy shit. Maybe the other guy smoked all his weed. <laughs> I guess... The first thing we learned this week is trust but verify. You're sleeping now? You have to say goodbye to them. Five trust but verify. Trust five fucking minutes. Uh we also learned that two thing two words you should never say to your drug dealer is surprise me. Because they will. Boy, will you be surprised. Yeah. We've learned that there are many horrible places to be naked. The the freeway is but one, but it is... That's, yeah, that, that's not what they mean by freeway. It's not that free. 
not for free balling. Three pounds per square inch, gentlemen. Three pounds per square inch. Just wet paper towel. Um, we've learned that if you run out of pot, just go get more. Just go get more pot. It's not like it's hard. You don't have to burn the house down. With you still inside, no less. Yeah. We've learned if you're going to advertise something or, or name something or come up with a slogan for something, Google that shit first. Well, there's Always. two things you need to do. One, you need to Google it. Mm -hmm. Two, you need to run up by a 14-year-old. Yes. If that 14-year-old starts to giggle, don't, don't do even it. fucking ask why. It doesn't matter. You, you don't want to know why. And finally, we've learned if a bathroom explodes, there's a reason. Yeah, I don't think there's a, there's a bathroom uprising. I don't think they're they've gained self awareness and just aren't taking our shit anymore. <laughs> Literally, 